Hey guys, Zor here from ZorGameGeek.com. Today we're going to talk about the preparedness skill in the Gumshoe role-playing game system. For those of you who don't know about this system, Gumshoe has two sets of abilities, investigative and general. Investigative abilities are those things which is unique to the Gumshoe system, or started with them, where you say, I'm using bureaucracy to find out this piece of information that only the government knows, and you get that information as a core clue. General abilities are those abilities where there is uncertainty as to the outcome. Shooting, sense trouble, and preparedness, where you have to roll a d6, and if you roll a four or above, generally four is the difficulty number, then you succeed. And you get to spend your points, you have ranks, those ranks uh, represent pool points, and you can spend those pool points to give you a plus one. Each point gives you a plus one. So generally, if you spend three points, you're guaranteed to succeed. And then those pool points only refresh fully in between investigations. There are ways to get those to refresh mid-investigation, but that's between you and your keeper or your handler, depending on the setting and how you guys are playing. So preparedness. Preparedness is this ability when I first read it, blew my mind. I would played some Shadowrun. I've listened to some Shadowrun actual play games. And an entire tentpole of the Shadowrun game playing style is this idea of legwork. When you're going on a run, you are trying to find out as much as you can about your opponents and their security system and who they are and their abilities so that you can then go shopping to get those materials that you need to succeed in that uh, uh, mission. So that is an essential part of a successful run, not an essential, an important part of a successful run is that information gathering, intelligence gathering, and then acquiring those items. Gumshoe does away with that, with the preparedness skill. Let's say that you are trying to find your way through this underground warren uh, a tunnel system or sewer system even, and you are being attacked by ghouls. And you're having this running battle and you get to this place where you realize, oh, I could maybe collapse the ceiling here if I have some C4 charges, some shaped C4 charges, and uh, somebody in the group is a demolitions expert. They have that skill, that ability, but nobody has written down on their character sheet that they have C4. Well, did you think about bringing C4 beforehand? Well, you, you know that by using your preparedness skill. Some of this is a little bit of a negotiation between you and the keeper or the handler, your game master, where you say, hey, I would like to make a preparedness roll to see if I have C4 on me, if I brought C4. Depending on the game system, if you are dealing, dealing with Trail of Cthulhu, they don't have C4, all right? It just wasn't around in the 1920s. Instead, it's do you have dynamite? The problem is, is dynamite explodes and to collapse things like rock, you usually have to drill a hole and, and place it and you run the line and you hit the plunger and all that sort of stuff, which you could do in a non-emergent situation. So maybe the, the game master says, hey, yeah, I'll let you roll for the dynamite, but if you want a long fuse, an electrical plunger box to set it off so you're not right on top of the uh, um, of the explosion, then your difficulty number is not a four; it's a five or a six. Okay, so that's part of all of that negotiation, and you roll your d6 and you get the number. Either you succeed or fail, and if you fail, well, that's interesting too. You find out what the next plan is. But if you want to succeed, and 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 the game encourages the game master to tell the players what the difficulty number is. Because part of that tension in the gameplay is using up your resources. The game master wants you, the player, 
to use up your resources. That's what makes this game, these games fun and interesting is when you get desperate, things are, are close or on the line and you're out of points, you can still roll. Remember, if you have a zero pool, then you can still roll your test. You just, you're just living with the dice, okay? Uh, and if you need a four or better on a D6, that's 50-50, right? So throw the bones, see what happens. So by telling them the target number, as the keeper, as the game master, you're actually daring them, double dog daring them. Hey, if you think this is important, this is important enough to you to be able to collapse that ceiling, and I'm telling you, you need a six. Well, maybe you should spend five points. Five of your seven points, eight points, five points, you know, how of your preparedness skill because you use this thing and some other thing happens in the session, in the investigation, and you're out of preparedness points. What do you do then? You're rolling the dice. Because remember, just because you, you have a zero pool doesn't mean you can't make the test roll. You just are less certain of your success. So you no longer have to bog your sessions down with shopping runs. You no longer have to then ask questions about, or, or answer questions from the players about, well, how much does this cost? Well, is this available? What about this? What about that? You just get to move right onto the action. Now, some may say, oh, well, but that breaks the fiction. That breaks the fiction of the game because how is it, if you didn't think in advance of bringing it, how is it that you suddenly have it? Does it magically appear? Uh, uh, you know, gumshoe games tend to be cosmic existential horror game, so weird things can happen like that. But the gumshoe system, gumshoe games, deal with this question in several areas very well. And how they deal with it is the montage, the flashback montage. It's not that you suddenly magically have it, it's cinematic. It's like you're in a Jason Bourne movie where all of a sudden there's a little flashback and you are back at your base, you're back at HQ, and you have this little conversation with one of the other agents, and you say, oh, you know what, what should we bring here? And one of the agents says, you know what? You should bring some dynamite. You should bring some C4 and, and a fuse, and you just have this little flash where you pull it down off the shelf, and you package it up and it says C4 on it. And you have your tactical vest and you stuff it in your tactical vest and you put the plunger or, or the, the fuse or whatever it is over here, bing, bang, boom, and you have it, okay? So what your successful preparedness test does is it allows you to have a flashback montage so that you have exactly what you need to succeed. Because maybe next time you fail your roll and there's no montage. You're like, oh, I brought C4. Oh, oh, we're, no, you know, looking through. No, I didn't. Sorry, guys. Let's find another way of dealing with these hordes of ghouls running towards us in these other ground caverns. All right, guys, that's it about the preparedness skill. If you want to learn more about the gumshoe system and specifically about how to create characters in the gumshoe role-playing game, I recommend that you go to zorgamegeek.com slash gumshoe create. The link's going to be down below. Again, that's zorgamegeek.com slash gumshoe create. All right, guys, until next time, keep gaming.